Okay, guys, when you open up your common lit assignment, it should look something like this. You're going to click open the assignment. As you go through, you can choose to do the read aloud or you can choose to read it yourself. You are expected and I will get notification if you do not stop at each bubble. The Q1 all the way through Q4, all the way down, these are all guided guiding questions. This is to help you make sure you understand what you have previously read. Go through carefully. So I'm going to read it with you. We're going to go through the questions and then we're going to go to the assessment questions and I want to explain those as well. So we'll start here. When Dorothy awoke, the sun was shining through the trees and Toto had long been out chasing birds around him and squirrels. She sat up and looked around her. Scarecrow still standing patiently in his corner waiting for her. We must go and search for water, she said to him. Why do you want water, he asked. To wash my face and clean after the dust of the road and to drink so the bread will not stick in my throat. It must be inconvenient. Notice these numbers here. This helps you to figure out the meaning of the word. Inconvenient means causing trouble or annoyance. It must be inconvenient to be made of flesh. Flesh meaning the skin, muscles, and fat of a human body. Let's reread. It must be inconvenient to be made of flesh, said the scarecrow thoughtfully, for you must sleep and eat and drink. However, you have brains, and it is worth a lot of bother to be able to think properly. So question one of the guided questions tells us, the scarecrow thinks that being human would be difficult for all of the reasons except, so he thinks it's going to be difficult. He thinks it's difficult because you have to do what? You have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to drink. Eating, drinking, resting. Well, those were all mentioned. The only one that was not was thinking. Tells you here, good job. We should be able to move on. They left the cottage and walked through the trees until they found a little spring of clear water where Dorothy drank and bathed and ate her breakfast. She saw there was not much bread left in the basket and the girl was thankful the scarecrow did not have to eat anything for there was scarcely, barely or hardly, scarcely enough for herself and Toto to eat for the day. When he had finished her meal, when she, I'm sorry, when she had finished her meal and was about to go back to the road of yellow brick, she was startled, scared, to hear a deep groan nearby. What was that? She asked timidly. That means showing a lack of courage or confidence. I cannot imagine, replied the scarecrow, but we can go and see. Just then another groan reached their ears and the sound seems to come from behind them. They turned and walked through the forest a few steps. When Dorothy discovered something shining in a ray of sunshine that fell between the trees, she ran to the place and then stopped short with a little cry of surprise. One of the big trees had been partly chopped through and standing beside it with an uplifted ax in his hands was a man made entirely of tin. Tin meaning a type of metal. His head and arms were his head and arms and legs were jointed upon his body. That means attached. But he stood perfectly motionless, as if he could not stir at all. Dorothy looked at him in amazement, and so did the scarecrow, while Toto barked sharply and made a snap at the tin legs, which hurt his teeth. Question two. Which of the following best describes why Dorothy is surprised? A, the man is made of tin. B, he has an ax. C, he is alone, or D, the man scares Toto. So when we find out that she is surprised, is where? Right here, paragraph 10. She ran to the place and then stopped short with a little surprise. This is what she was freaked out about, right? The guy was made what? Entirely of tin. Good job. Moving on. Oops, sorry, got a little too far. Here we go. Did you groan, asked Dorothy? Yes, answered the Tin Man, I did. 
I've been groaning for more than a year and no one has ever heard me before or come to help me. Well, what can I do for you? She inquired softly, for she was moved by the sad voice in which the man spoke. Get an oil can and oil my joints, he answered. They are rested so badly, I cannot move them at all. If I am well oiled, I shall soon be all right again. You'll find an oil can on a shelf in my cottage. Dorothy at once ran back to the cottage and found the oil can, and then she returned and asked anxiously, uh, where are your joints? Anxiously means afraid or nervous, especially for what may happen. Oil in my neck first, replied the tin wood man. So she oiled it and it was quite badly rusted. The scarecrow took hold of the tin head and moved it gently from side to side until it worked freely. And then the man could turn it himself. Question three, why is the tin wood man unable to move? A, he ran out of oil. B, he's too afraid to move. C, his joints have rusted. Or D, he is too cold. Give you a second. You can see here in paragraph 16, he tells her, get an oil can, oil my joints. They are rusted so badly. He's unable to move because his joints are rusted. Now, oil the joints in my arms, he said, and Dorothy oiled them and the scarecrow bent them carefully until they were quite free from rust and as good as new. The tin man gave a sigh of satisfaction and lowered his ax, which he leaned against the tree. This is a great comfort, he said. I've been holding that ax in the air ever since I rested, and I'm glad to be able to put it down at last. Now, if you will oil the joints of my legs, I shall be all right once more. So they oiled his legs until he could move them freely, and he thanked them again and again for his release for he seemed a very polite creature and very grateful. How does the Tin Man respond to Dorothy and the Scarecrow's help? A, he is happy and thankful. B, he is upset they didn't come sooner. C, he is unthankful for their help. Or D, he wants to repay them. Give you a second. And correct, the answer is A, he is happy and thankful. And we can prove that right here in paragraph 22 where it states, and he thanked them again and again. So now when you click begin assessment, it will begin to take you to the assessment questions. I'm going to go through the first two to explain right here what this means. Part A, you will see in question two, part B. Part A is gonna ask you a question. Part B is gonna ask you for the proof of your answer in part A. So part A is asking the question, part B is asking for the proof. Let's read the question. Part A. Read the sentence from paragraph 15 of the passage. What can I do for you? She inquired softly, for she was moved by his sad voice in which the man spoke. What is the meaning of the word inquired in the sentence? So the trick I'm going to teach you before you choose your answer, Let's say you think A is the correct answer. Before you choose, you take your answer and you put it in the space of the word they're asking about. So we were asked what the meaning of the word inquired was. We're gonna take the word accepted and put it right here where acquired, inquired is. Read the sentence again, ask yourself if it makes sense. What can I do for you? She accepted. Obviously, that does not make any sense. That would be an answer we would throw out. How about the word admitted? What can I do for you? She admitted softly. That doesn't make any sense. We would throw that question out. That answer, I'm sorry. Argued. What can I do for you? She argued softly. That obviously does not make any kind of sense. So that would be a thrown out answer. We are left with D, but let's verify. What can I do for you? She asked softly. Obviously, that makes great sense. You would choose D, move on to the next question. Part B now asks you, which detail from the passage best provides clues for the meaning of the word inquired? Your job is to figure out which detail helps you understand, gives you the clues for this word inquired. Remember we said inquired meant asked. So 
Toto barked sharply and made a snap at the ten legs. Is that a detail providing us a clue that inquired means asked? Absolutely not. Throw it out. B. No one has ever heard me before or come to help me. So when you go back over here where she asks and she inquires to him, what can I do for you? She inquired softly. He tells her, get an oil can and oil my joints. So right here, no one's ever come to, come to help me before. Doesn't truly answer how we figured out the word inquired. He answers her, if I'm well oiled, I shall soon be all right again. The last answer option, you will find an oil can on a shelf in my cottage. So obviously the last two answers that are the best, one of them's better than the other. You need to choose the one you feel is the best answer that gives you the best clue for understanding the word inquired. Select your answer. As you move through these assessment questions, they are going to continue to be a part A and a part B all the way through. So keep in mind, part A asks you a question, part B, now you're gonna to need to prove your answers. Good luck. If you have any questions, reach out on the stream. Please do not forget to be checking your classwork tab. You need to be looking for the social studies review for the quiz on Friday by the end of the day. Make sure you remember to study your vocabulary and spelling for your tests on Friday. Also, go through all of your assignments. Make sure you check for anything that is missing. Check for anything that was returned to you with a failing grade, a zero, or a comment that you need to revise and resubmit. All of these things need to be handled by the end of the day on Friday, beginning next week. I will not be accepting any corrections from this past week, so you need to make sure you're getting your stuff done. Stay on top of your grades, guys. This is your responsibility. Hugs. See y'all soon. Take care.